So Andy Roddick and Ryan Williams ready to begin their first round match here at the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center, specifically Arthur Ashe Stadium. I'm Sam Gore along with Taylor Dent. And this was, I think, the second toughest draw for a, a qualifier. Roddick was there, and then Songa also had a qualifier. Did you see any of the qualifying where you thought you were looking at a guy that may have a chance to win a few rounds in the main draw, or was it a pretty big drop-off this year? No, any time you look at the qualifiers, and especially the guys who make it, they're all solid. They're all good. I think it depends more on what type of draw they get. Obviously, Smichek and Reynolds played first round. Right. So those were two qualifiers, and, and Smichek won that in four. Um, then he plays Kane and Shikori next. I, I don't know. That's a, it's a pretty tall order for Smichek, but uh, you know, he'll go down swinging for sure. Roddick serving to start the match. He won the toss. No surprise that he elected to serve. Roddick winning his 32nd career title in Atlanta earlier this summer. He beat Jill Mueller in the final. He had to take out John Isner to get to that final. And there's that big kick that Roddick uses so effectively on this court. Yeah, wins at his back. Spin just jumping up a lot. Made Ryan... <laughs> Look a little silly on that return. I would think, Taylor, that these two have probably at least hit before because Ryan was a, a practice partner for the Davis Cup team. That was um, earlier this year. I know Roddick hasn't played Davis Cup this year, but he's been around that Davis Cup program, a guy that Patrick McEnroe's called in to hit with the guys at times. Yeah. Anytime you're one of the better American juniors and one of the better American collegiate players, which Ryan Williams is normally you're hitting with, the top American professionals. Just watching that point Taylor, and I'm wondering if, if Ryan Williams' backhand is going to make it at this level. Is that a shot he's going to have to change, or is that chip pretty 100%. good? 100%. Going to have to change it, 100%. I mean, I chipped, you know, the vast majority of my backhands. And you you chip to, because you're in deep trouble. Or in, in Federer's case, you kind of entice players to hit to your forehand. But... You know, Ryan Williams' forehand isn't as good as Federer's, not right now anyway. And he's hitting those chips in the middle of the court. You know, somebody with a, a bigger weapon than, than Roddick will just put those balls away. You can see Roddick's just kind of rolling the ball around the court, not really doing too much. But if Ryan does that against, you know, guys in the top ten with big forehands, he's not seeing the next ball. Yeah. So comfortable hold for Roddick. About to turn 30 on August 30th, a couple of days from now. Ryan Williams uh, made a name for himself, the University of Tennessee. He's a great collegiate player there. And, uh, recently has turned pro. And we saw those two serves there are Ryan's favorite serves. He served those all the time in the qualities. The one out wide on the deuce side and down the tee on the ad side. 
And it is probably Roddick's weaker side to return on. He makes a lot of backhand returns. The forehand, not, not quite so much. Oh, good start for Williams. Quick 40-love lead. I know you said this first set could be pretty tight. Well, if Williams comes out and, and you know, just grooves the ball around and, and does that, I think it could be a tight first set, but it could be also a very physical first set. And Roddick is in pretty good shape. Yeah. You'd have to assume he's in better shape than, you know, some guy that's 21 years old and, and fresh on the tour. Well, I mean, no disrespect to Ryan Williams, but if you stood the two next to each other like at the coin toss, I mean, Andy Roddick's built like a man, and He's Ryan Williams still has yeah. the build of a junior. Of a 21-year-old. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It just is what it is. Hasn't filled out yet. Still game point. Good hold by Ryan Williams. This Roddick really couldn't do much, too much with those volleys. And Ryan Williams, this is a huge game for him to get on the board right away. Did this clip the tape or was that a whiff? Oh, he just missed it. Again, it's, it's really windy down there. We saw that in the first match today, the women's match. It, players having trouble judging that ball when they first come out here. It's whipping around. My favorite serve on the ad side when the wind was coming in my face was that kicker out wide. It just seemed to slow it up just enough to where you created even more angle, get your opponent out of position. You got the whole deuce side to work with. Kind of used the, the slice to set up that inside out forehand. That was a much better slice. Obviously, he's on the side with the wind at his back, so it carried a little bit deeper. And Roddick didn't sting it, gave him a forehand. He stepped up and cranked it. He has the ability on that forehand side. It's so loose and so whippy. He can really hit it with a, you know, a great quality, good spin, good pace. He just chooses to mostly roll it in. Roddick. Hammers another ace. He's already got three here in his second service game. That's good. Wow, what a point. He, Roddick, couldn't, he couldn't put that overhead away. And, and Ryan Williams can move. He's, he, you know, he's tall and lanky, and he's got good speed, good defensive ability around the court. That was a smart shot. So Ryan Williams at least holding his own early, 30-all.
Roddick ranked 22 in the world right now. He fell out of the top 20 in February. Got back in briefly earlier this month. But he's had a very good summer. Roddick holds, so no breaks through the first three games. But a tightly contested opening set. So Ryan Williams holding his own with Andy Roddick, but he's serving from behind, so he's always got that little bit of extra pressure. Thank you. It's a big moment for Ryan Williams. Do you remember a moment like this for you, Taylor, when you were on Arthur Ashe Stadium for the first time against a big name player and you were young? Gosh. Um, I'm putting you on the spot. I played a couple big matches, but Arthur Ashe Stadium was. I started playing here more a little bit later in my career. Yeah. I played a ton of matches on Louis Armstrong and mm. a ton of matches on Grandstand. There's a, a badge someone's wearing around their neck behind Ryan's side of the court. Roddick just wants him to hide the, the badge. <laughs> The most memorable match I had on Ash was probably when I played uh, Agassi. Fourth, yeah. Fourth round, played I Agassi. That. Sure. I was up a set. I was playing really well, and I had a hamstring that was I hurt actually the round before against Fernando Gonzalez, and we had a, a bunch of rain delays. And every single rain delay that we came off with Agassi and came back on, it just got worse and worse to where I was just hobbling around the court. And yeah. It, it was it was a bummer because I was playing really well. I remember that. For Ryan Williams, I mean, this is it's huge. This big, I, huge moment for him. Yeah, this reminds me of another match against Agassi. I qualified at Wimbledon. This is my first year ever playing Wimbledon. Qualified, play Agassi first round on uh, center court at Wimbledon. So <laughs> that was pretty intimidating. Use that shot a couple of times to produce a winner. And guys are standing so deep in the court these days to defend. That, that forehand drop shot has really become a huge weapon. You know, in, in the past, whenever you saw somebody hit a forehand drop shot, it would be the other guy's just bailing out of the shot, uh, bailing out of the point. But now, I think if you're an attacking player and you don't have that in your arsenal, you're really doing yourself an injustice. That's the first unforced error of the match. What, in your opinion, Taylor, is the most intimidating center court of the of the four majors? For me, right, French Open. It's on clay court. Well, yeah, but I mean, just <laughs> no, in terms in of the atmosphere, atmosphere and the, the surrounding night match, night match in Ash is is pretty crazy. 
Yeah, yeah. The, the feeling is electric. You have more people here than any other tennis stadium in the world. And if you're playing a night match, you are playing one of the biggest names in tennis. Ryan Williams, drop shot artist. Roddick's been hampered by a hamstring himself lately. He's had some, some problems with his hamstring. So uh, Ryan Williams trying to take advantage of that, though, in these drop shots. Easy hold for Ryan Williams. Not much to separate these two so far. Yeah, it was, we did uh, Murray's match yesterday. His hamstring looked to be bothering him, too. Yeah, it was. A reminder to go to usopen.org, your information source for this Grand Slam. And if you're tweeting, put the hashtag USOpen on there, and you can see your tweet on that US Open website. Five U.S. Open champions in the draw this year. I didn't know there were that many out there in this era. Del Potro, Djokovic, Federer, Hewitt. It'd be easy to guess the four. But yeah, Hewitt was forgot the that Hewitt one. was in the draw. Yeah, that's right. You got the wild card with the uh, the trade. Finding himself in a little bit of a hole here. Had a, a disappointing loss in Cincinnati. That was really his only blip of the summer. That was to Shardy, right? Yeah, Jeremy Shardy. And, I, you know, actually I say that, but, I mean, losing to Darcy and Winston-Salem was a shocker too. But he seemed to just be anxious to get here to New York. Roddick winning the title in Atlanta this summer. Yeah, it's tough. Roddick is at a stage in his career where the Grand Slams are so, so important. But at the same time, you know, he's ranked 22 in the world. He needs to do well in those smaller tournaments like the Cincy's and the Winston-Salem Open just to up his ranking so he doesn't have to play guys like Federer, Murray, Nadal, Djokovic too early in these, in these tournaments. A good get by Roddick to avoid going down break point. I know Ryan didn't intentionally, you know, hit that ball so that returned so weak up the line. I think he mishit a little bit. That's the problem with going soft up the line is you really expose yourself to a player running over there, taking it early and creating some incredible angle cross court. Another race from Roddick. Anytime you want to change direction or, or go up the line, it better be it better be a ball that's going to do damage in some way, either with pace, with height and depth. You just don't want to poke it down the line. Now Roddick turning up the heat those last two points. And he holds serve. Roddick still in front. No breaks. 2-3. First set.
So Ryan Williams has had a serve that Andy Roddick hasn't been able to figure out so far in this match. Williams trying to hold for his third straight time and eventually even this first set. Ryan Williams, also former practice partner of Roger Federer. So he's gotten hit with a lot of the big guys. Again, Roddick, he's in control of the point in a good position, and he just hasn't been able to pull it off. That was a great point. Ryan had that point under control until he hit that short forehand. He had right back cross court to Roddick. And Roddick changed direction, improved his position in the court, and just couldn't finish. Tricky little volley. Again, just planted his feet. What makes volleying tough is if you don't move your feet through the ball. What makes volleying easy, if you keep your swing simple and just take a nice, smooth stride through the hit, it really simplifies volleying it, tremendously. So far, your prediction that it could be a close set has come true. Now you make enough predictions, Sam. <laughs> Some of them are going to come true sooner or later. Know that, yeah. Williams holds again, so he, he really hasn't even been tested. Yeah, just dropped three points in three games on serve. Those are the kind of points that may pay dividends for Roddick later. It's a pretty physical point, even though he lost it. Yeah, tough to tough to lose the point from that position from Roddick because he's not trying to hit a winner. He's just trying to work Ryan Williams around. He has a golden opportunity. He's not looking sharp out there right now. Just serving pretty well as usual. Well, too, I mean, doesn't Williams have the advantage that he's seen Roddick play probably hundreds of times? Roddick may not have ever really seen Ryan hit play, maybe hit with him a couple of times. I mean, does that help you at all when you're the underdog? Sure, sure it does. But I, I think that kind of in today's game, I mean, the 
variations of styles of play don't come into it quite as much as it used to 15 years ago. Right. 10, 15 years ago. So, you know, Andy doesn't have to worry about chipping and charging and serving and volleying. defend so well. Yeah, he hit that lob perfect. That chip again landed in the middle of the court with nothing on it. Really got him into trouble and he got out with that mile high lob landing, you know, foot from the baseline. Roddick did a good job to compose himself and just keep on the attack. That's one of the things that the juniors I work with have a tough time understanding. They feel like, oh, you know, just because my opponent hit a good defensive shot, it shouldn't happen. I should still be on the attack. Your opponent can play great defensive shots. Yeah. yeah. Well, that time, Williams couldn't reach it. And it's okay. They're allowed to. They're supposed to play good defensive shots. And, and your job from there is just to reset the point, is just to not go for, for low percentage stuff. Just get back on the offensive at your earliest, at the earliest, safest moment. Roddick continuing to serve big. As long as he's got that serve, he's in good shape. Still hasn't figured out a way to break Williams, though. It's 3-4 in the first set. Struggling to figure out a way to make an impression on Ryan Williams. That's 100% correct. Once the point starts, it, it seems like Andy's really having a tough time. You know, one of five on second serve points, and he's only won three points total out of 15 on Ryan Williams' serve. So Ryan is the stronger player once the rally starts so far. Nicknames Rhino. Ryan Williams. Since we're talking about names, you know what Roddick's middle name is? I actually don't know what his middle I name is. I didn't really ever know. I just stumbled across it. No one seems to know. It's Steven. Steven? Yeah. Very traditional. Yeah. That's nice. With a PH. thinking about a chase review. 
doesn't pull the trigger, and he's facing his first bit of adversity here. Love 30. Even if you think that ball was out, I mean, to me, that's a time to use a chase review. Love 15, ball was close. You, th you feel it was close? Just throw it up there. You've got three of them. Roddick looks like he's found something there. He's chipped a couple of times. I think his, we, the play we can kind of keep an eye on is Roddick's going to try and chip a ball to Ryan's backhand. He's going to hope that Ryan goes to the chip grip, and he's going to run around and try and strike some forehands. Oh, he missed it that time. That's the first drop shot I think he's attempted that he hasn't made. He tried the one fancy backhand with the big swing. Yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, he hasn't missed many. Just like that, couple bad points, and boom, 1540. First chance for Roddick to break. He's got one more to work with. Be a perfect time for Roddick to break because he could... Try to serve out the set in the next game. Not going to happen. Clutch serving down 1540. If he can come back and hold this game, that's a pretty good effort because he played three awful shots. He's been very composed out here. I mean, you, when you look at him, other than his physical appearance, the way he's played, it hasn't been a sign of a nervous rookie. Yeah, it was just this game so far, but it, I mean, it's like he brought it back and, and could sneak away with a hold. Ryan Williams had to get a wild card into qualifying. And Roddick's going to have another chance to break. And Roddick's got the break. That was a pretty bad game from Ryan. That was four unforced errors in my book, four unforced errors, and one good shot from Roddick. Roddick hit that one good forehand angle. But first point, Ryan Williams tried to gas a forehand inside in, missed it in the net. Second point, he hit that defensive forehand long. Third point, he missed the drop shot. Then uh, he got it back to Deuce. And then, and then that just missed slice wide. It just gave Roddick that game. That's really the, the fine line between success and failure at this level, isn't it? Just managing those those games, those critical games in a match. This is a great shot from Williams. Yeah, and that's what the better players just don't do. You know, you the more you go down the rankings, the more you'll see guys just string a bad game together. And you know, and, and you don't see that from the better guys. They just they play solid. Wow. About that pickup, right at his feet, no problem. He needed redemption for that whiff backhand volley earlier. The key on drop volleys or, or half volleys, for that matter, just keep it low. 
whether they're sh if they're if you can keep it low and short that's ideal but if you keep it low and deep at least you survive and, and fight again just try and keep it about six inches over the net or, or less Roddick closes in on the set. He's got set point. It's so funny how these matches work. You know, you just you see the score line sometimes, and they don't really tell the story. You know, Ryan looked like the better player right up until 3-all. And then he just played that awful service game and 6-3 set just like that. That's what those top players have the ability to do. They just win the games at the important point. And Roddick takes the opening set 6-3. Felt cheated, Sam. Felt cheated. <laughs> it's okay. I'm over it now. I don't think you are. <laughs> That's huge. 141. Let's see if Roddick can maintain some momentum here going into the second set. Now that he's taking a big challenge from Williams and turned it into nothing. And it'll be Ryan Williams trying to get over the disappointment of losing that first set, serving to Roddick. himself up when he won the set. He's still doing it here. Dangerous moment here for Ryan Williams. This kid get away from him in a hurry. Yeah, that was definitely some sloppy footwork. He's gotten away with it a few times, but you wouldn't see Nadal or Federer, you know, leaning back and falling back like that on a forehand. And on the first point, it was just poor shot choice. You know, he's six, eight feet behind the baseline, trying to go down the line hard and low. And if you go down the down the line from there, just go high, rip it nice and high with a lot of spin.
four hands left, and that's three forehand errors this game and putting in two bad games in a row. Triple break point. Double fault hands the break to Roddick. So a disastrous opening game for Ryan Williams. This is how Andy Roddick wins matches. He just stays solid and his opponents, you know, they, they either mentally get broken down, physically get broken down, or just their execution falls way off the map. So look at those first set stats. And ended with 141 mile an hour ace. It was a great set from Williams right up until 3-all. It was, it was a great set. I mean, Roddick won, uh, what do you win, 20% of his second serve points there? So he was, I felt he was the better player for half of the first set. He just didn't have to rely on that second serve. He got 81% of his first serves in. I mean, only five second serves. <laughs> Roddick used to be one of the tour leaders in first serve percentage, and that was when he was one of the tour leaders in aces. It's always been a point of emphasis for him getting that first serve in. Yeah, he doesn't want to play too many baseline rallies, especially against the guys who are, you know, top 20, top 10. He just isn't quite as strong as those guys, the, most of those guys are, he doesn't have the weapons. So his biggest weapon is that first serve. Let's get it in as many times as we can. He just moves it around so well when he's, when he's playing well. It's like a, a baseball pitcher hitting different spots. It leaves the hitter guessing. Yeah, to me, when I was playing big servers, it, it didn't really bother me the pace. Um, very much at all. And, and having said that, from, from my experience, me serving, whenever I was serving my best, it wasn't necessarily when I was hitting it my hardest. It was when I was really able to hit my spots well. And that's what Roddick has done throughout the course of his career, you know, so much like Sampras, just able to hit all the spots consistently. It makes it brutal to try and return. That's an excellent game for Roddick. And Roddick hasn't dropped a point yet here in the second set. Ryan Williams hasn't won a point. Eight, no. When you're stepping up to the line to serve and a guy like Roddick Taylor, what, what's at him going? Or, at him or returning? No, it, both of you. Okay. Be, you know, you both had big serves, games where your serve was the dominant shot. But what's going through your mind? I mean, what are you thinking when you step up to the line to serve? A, f a, f a few things. And, and in the beginning, you know, it's, it's a lot of thought, but – after a while, it just becomes second nature in a, in a field. But I guess because my accuracy wasn't as good as Roddick's, not by a long shot. I relied a lot more on hitting through guys with my pace. Good lob into the wind. Um, so the first thing I would hope for is that somebody was standing close to the baseline because then I didn't have to worry about my accuracy. I could just hit my favorite, you know, fast serves. And if they're standing close, they're going to be rushed. They're not going to be able to get the ball down at my feet. And, and there we go. So that almost makes it brainless for me. Now, if they're standing back, where are they standing back? Are they hedging towards the center? Are they hedging towards the wide serve? And, and what uh, return is their favorite return? Where do they go? So when you get up to the line, you're looking at where the returners stay. Mostly, standing. exactly. I, I look mostly where they're standing, and then I have in the back of my head what their favorite return is and what's been working throughout the course of the match. But like I said, ideally for me, if I played a returner that stood on the baseline, I was happy because then that just enhanced my, my speed. If, if I played somebody that was standing far back, I'd just roll my eyes and go, okay, <laughs> time for shoelace volleys. <laughs> F 
first point, third point that Ryan Williams has won this set. First point where Roddick looked like he didn't know why he lost that point. Looked up at Jake Garner for some reason. He, th he was curious if the ball was in or out. He's going to maybe throw a challenge up there, but I think that ball skidded a pretty good. Only means it hits the line. There's a good serve for Williams. So he holds it love, but Roddick has the break in hand. And Roddick up a set and a break here in the second match of the day on Arthur Ashe Stadium. Roddick stepping up, ready to serve, trying to maintain that one-break lead here against Ryan Williams in the second set. What do you think of Ryan Williams from a, a long-term forecast? Too early to tell? or I think, well, I think his backhand definitely needs to improve. That's number one. And now I know in this match it's actually been his forehand that's cost him. But w what happens when you have a, a weaker side, like I believe his, his backhand is, is once you get forehands, you feel like you have to gas it. And you feel like you have to do something a little bit more special with it so you don't get hurt on that backhand side. So I feel... If he, got, if he improved his backhand, just emotionally, I think his forehand would get better because he wouldn't have to go maybe for quite such a good shot from a defensive situation. He could rely on his backhand doing, doing some of the work and getting out of trouble. But this is, you know, this is the big difference between professional tennis and, and everything else yeah. and, and collegiate or junior tennis is the pros really take away the center of the court, whereas... You know, it's not so much in college tennis. You can see Ryan Williams hitting a lot of balls, you know, middle of the court around the tee in the service line area. And, you know, 
a guy a guy like Roddick, who's kind of a, a counter puncher, kind of a grinder, is still making him pay. So just what's, what's going to happen when he play, pay, plays somebody with a big forehand? Just going to get eaten alive. So Williams, after the U.S. Open, I mean, he's going to start trying to work his way up to the tour, playing challengers. He's ranked 289 in the world. He'll, he'll get a nice little bump from making the main draw here at the U.S. Open. That ranking was coming into the Open. Game point for Roddick. Roddick holds. A little emotional outburst from Roddick trying to pump himself up in this match. I like that. Yeah, it's good. And, and you know, he needs it. He hasn't had a spectacular summer after Atlanta. It's been it's been just so so. Reminder to go to USOpen.org. It's your exclusive online home for live scoring, stats, draws, interviews. You can watch every single player's interview. It's recorded on that website. Nice. Even Roddick acknowledging. The ball dropped a little short. It was a decent play by Roddick. I think Ryan just read it and just started running pretty early and had all the time in the world to do whatever he wanted with that backhand. I think Roddick's kind of gone into that Sampras mentality of this stage in his career when he gets the break. He, not that he's not trying to break, but he just doesn't quite seem to have the same intensity on his return games. I've kind of noticed that a few times this summer where I've wondered about it. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, if he is doing I don't think that's his personality. Yeah. So, But, I mean, it may be true, but if he is, I don't think he has the luxury to do that. He's not as good a holder anymore as Sampras was. So if he is doing that, I think it's dangerous. Well, he got the break, and now this could be two games in a row that Williams holds at love. That's the only thing that leads me to even have that thought. Roddick seems to be trying to end the points a little quicker right now. It's possible. But, I mean, in the first three games in the first set, Ryan was holding it, you know. Yeah. Well, very, that's very true, comfortably. Yeah. I just think that when Williams is playing solid tennis, you know, he, his game matches up well against Roddick. The problem is he's 21 years old. He doesn't have the experience and the maturity to keep playing one good game after another, which yeah. is what it takes. There's another love hold, but Roddick still in front by a set and a break.
Andy Roddick upset in a break. He's up early off the chair as he traditionally is. Last night they were positioning ball kids out onto the court to keep the players from starting until time had been called. Fetter and Donald Young kept getting up early, and that happens with Roddick a lot of times too. Just They'll have to put ball kids out on the court because he's, he's raring to go. That time it was Ryan Williams who was making him wait. Didn't need the ball kids out there. A one break difference, no room for error for Roddick. Serving these second serves with the wind at your back, especially if it's a stronger wind, can be a little bit tricky at times and a little bit counterintuitive because if you, you know, you're going to get more power out of the wind, but if you slow the racket head down to take some of that pace off, you end up losing a lot of the spin, which creates the dip on the ball, and then you sail them long often. And so you almost have to swing a little bit faster to get more spin on the ball to get it to dip down. Back off. It's trouble. Game point for Roddick to go up 4-2. And Roddick, another easy hold. It's been easy holds here in the set, aside from that one break we had. And that was an easy break. Broke at love. So every game's easy. similar situation from the first set, which is when Williams got broke and then Roddick was able to serve it out. Same thing would happen here, just a different score. I'm not sure if Ryan is being bothered by the wind on his forehand side, but God, he's been hitting a ton just off balance. And if he wants that forehand to be the weapon, I think it should be, and, and I think it can. You know, he needs to use those you know, quick steps like Nadal or get in position earlier like Federer. That's a good serve. So he can just lay into it instead of always falling back or leaning. I don't like that. Does this serve remind you of anybody a little bit? Uh, actually, well, probably, we're probably not thinking of the same people. I've got a name in mind. His serve looks so. slightly a little bit like Jack Sock, actually. Yeah. The motion. I'm going back in time. Oh. Oh. 
The, the motion kind of reminds me a little bit of Edberg. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Just, okay. I, I just see the it's an odd-looking serve. I hadn't really <laughs> seen it, you know, in a while. It's not exactly Edberg, but I can kind of see a little bit of it. It's a big point here for Williams. 30 all, trying to avoid what would be a break that could cost him the set. And he does. Well played. It's very nice. I think that is modern tennis at its best. Hit a nice big serve, get a short ball, rip a forehand to the open court, and knock away a volley. You see guys like Federer and Nadal. These guys do that with regularity. Oh, good hustle. And finally, Roddick puts it away. Last couple drop shots from Ryan have not surprised Roddick whatsoever. He really hustled to get up to that one. See the net points when Roddick. They're going to need a new stat up there. How many drop shots brought you to the net? <laughs> Forced net approaches. Yeah, that, I mean, that is <laughs> the case a lot of times. Guy wouldn't have been up there if he wasn't brought up there. Game point for Williams. Got, what got Ryan into trouble there wasn't necessarily his forehand. It was him trying to cover up that backhand so much that he just really compromised his position, didn't even have a chance to make an aggressive play on that ball. Just can't get to break point. Try to put this away. Got him again. So Williams holds, and at least he won't get served out of the set in the next game. But Roddick closing in on a two sets to love lead.
Roddick trying to maintain his one break lead. Hasn't been able to make an impression on Roddick's serve in this set. See Williams put his arms up there. I'm sure the wind held up that Roddick forehand. It ended up being close to a, a topspin drop shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he expected it to carry through a little bit deeper. Got him. That was a tough pass. He did a good job on the uh, Roddick forehand. You know, Roddick hit a great kicker, got exactly what he wanted was a short ball. Didn't quite get it close enough to the sideline, and Williams was able just to get it down slow enough and, and low enough to where Roddick had to let it bounce back up, and Roddick did misplay that slice just a little bit. A slight opening. 30, 50. With another ace, Williams taking a look at it. Have we had a chase review yet in this match? Ryan has threatened a couple yeah. times, but. I'm trying to think if we actually had one. I don't believe we have. This is ninth ace. for Roddick. <laughs> Hasn't held yet. A great, Williams. Yeah, it's a great play. I mean, if you can execute it, it's an extremely tough return. But Roddick falls off so hard to his left that that line is really open. Remember, earlier in the match, Ryan tried to do the same thing and shanked it and just gave Roddick an absolute sitter on the forehand side. Well, here we go. Now we got a chase review. And yeah, I think Ryan knows it's probably in, but it's not a bad challenge. Look, the set's almost over. You have deuce. You may as well throw it up on the board and, and, and see what happens. And Roddick holds. So a game away from taking a two sets to love lead. You can see how pumped Roddick's getting. I mean, you said yeah. it, you can said you said it earlier, Sam. And these guys don't take anybody lightly out there. They know it's just such small margins between winning and losing. Even when you're playing somebody that needed a wild card mm -hmm. into the qualifying event. And Roddick's had some some losses this year that he probably feels like he shouldn't have had. He's finally healthy now. Not taking anything for granted. So Williams serving to stay in the set.
see that a lot in juniors. You know, it's kind of been an eye opener for me, you know, coming back to the juniors and working with young kids, is they take so many opponents for for granted, and it ends up just coming back and biting them. You got to go out there. You have to play hard. If the opponent is not good enough to be on the court with you, then prove it. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah, that's a good point. He's really settled down after he got broken. Roddick hasn't been able to run away with the set. So, Andy Roddick will serve for the set after this changeover. He hasn't been broken this set. And it's going to all come down to the next game. Roddick serving for the set. Good start. Oh. Wow. It's another double on that side. We saw the same uh, last game Roddick was serving on this side. Yes, uh, two of his three have come in these last two games.
And Roddick arrives at set point. Winning some of those baseline rallies that, have, that go beyond 10 shots. And what a huge hole for Ryan Williams to fall down two sets to love and know what it would take to come back in this match. And Roddick ends the set with an ace. His 12th of the match. And he's up two sets to love here in Arthur Ashe Stadium. Match up great with him from the baseline. Um, let's just not worry about five sets. Let's just worry about set number three. Let's just see if I can make this make this go four, and then we'll we'll start talking about you know making this go the, go the distance. But right now, that's thinking way too far down the road. All we're thinking is let's see if we can just clean up my game a little bit. Hopefully, Roddick's for serve percentage dips, and and I can you know play some good quality tennis in that on those second serve points which I did so well in the first set and I might sneak away with a break he, he can't really break me unless I give him a game so I, I'm right in this match okay that's how I would say so you just talk to yourself talk yourself and into right it right into it okay. absolutely there you go otherwise if you don't think you can do it walk off the court shake hands yeah Ryan Williams will see what kind of frame of mind he's in down two sets to love Got the break early in the second set and never surrendered it. And I don't also don't know how he's feeling physically out there. Right. I mean, well, that's a big question. Yeah. yeah. Emotionally and mentally, that's how I would approach it. Physically, if he's starting to feel it out there, I saw him stretching his legs in that second set. Boom. And Roddick's off and running, love 30.
play's been working for him the whole match. There was only a couple of drop shots that didn't fool Roddick, but you know, Roddick has such a defensive mindset. Once the uh, the point gets started from the baseline, you get into a good position, hit a couple big forehands. He starts getting on his heels a little bit. It's The drop shot's worked great this match so far for Ryan. again trying to pump himself up will himself to a break and he's got the chance not sure what the idea behind that forehand up the line again was from Ryan even if that ball goes over the net Roddick's going to be able to take time away step in because it's going to drop short and hit a backhand cross court get him on the move It's always a safe play. When you're in trouble, just rip it high and heavy, deep cross court. Trying to go low down the line is probably the, the lowest percentage shot available. See that forehand from Roddick there? That was perfect. He was deep behind the baseline, behind in the point, just went high deep cross court, and he totally neutralized. He was fortunate enough that Williams missed, missed the ball to give him the break. But that was a very smart tactical shot. Break right away to start the third set. Here's the second set stats, Taylor. Yeah, it, was, it was a pretty solid set from Williams. It was just that one you know, awful game. I, I believe it was four errors in that one game to give Roddick the break. Awesome one-two punch again. Good first serve. Get the short ball. Could really hit that forehand approach anywhere as long as it's heavy and, and somewhat close to a sideline. Even if Williams tracks it down, you're going to have a very easy, comfortable volley put away. Sort of falling apart here in the early stages of the third set. Yeah, he did such a good job managing his errors in those first two sets, except for those games he got broken. But overall, pretty good. He's already racked up five unforced errors. Not even two games yet. Yeah, 
Roddick with the ace to consolidate the break and jump in front to Love. Roddick trying to make quick work of Ryan Williams, who got a wild card into qualifying and qualified. Here's his 13th ace. Ryan Williams was frozen. Yeah, that's the beauty of Roddick's serve. That's why it's been so successful. He can hit all the spots, he, and he can hit them fast. So unless you're just leaning on something, if he hits a good serve, you have no chance to get it back. We saw earlier in the second set, Roddick got up that break and then seemed to really struggle against William Surf for the remainder of the set until the, he was able to eventually serve it out. That's when Williams really caught fire after he got down the break. <laughs> 